Good morning, bonjour. Je m'appelle Olivier Marcil, je suis le vice principal aux relations externes et aux communications de l'Université McGill. Bienvenue à McGill, welcome to McGill, and welcome to the service point for undergraduate and graduate students. I would like to point out that this center, opened in 2010, is a shining symbol of McGill's commitment to continually improve its services to the students. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this event, which celebrates a huge milestone in philanthropy for McGill and for higher education in Quebec. It's with a lot of pride that we show this morning the results of a great team of work that has allowed us to create durable relations between our diplomas, their families and their friends. Tous ont uni leurs efforts pour faire en sorte que l'Université McGill ait les moyens de contempler l'avenir avec optimisme. L'événement d'aujourd'hui se déroulera de la façon suivante. D'abord, M. Yves Fortier, l'un de nos trois coprésidents de notre campagne de financement, viendront nous entretenir des résultats historiques de notre campagne que nous dévoilerons sous peu. Ensuite, la principale et vice-chancelière de l'Université, Mme Heather Monroe-Bloom, aura l'occasion de nous parler du pouvoir transformateur, des dons et de la philanthropie sur l'avenir de l'Université. Et enfin, nous aurons le plaisir d'entendre un représentant des premiers bénéficiaires de notre campagne de financement, nos étudiants, et l'un de nos plus brillants talents, Martin Legault, un petit cas de pain court, venez nous parler de comment la campagne de McGill a changé sa vie. Lorsque sera conclue cette partie officielle de notre événement, nous tiendrons un point de presse pour les journalistes qui le souhaiteront. I would like to recognize in that room the attendance of Mr. Kip Cobbett, President of McGill Board of director of governors, as well as some more generous donator, Monsieur Marcel Desautels and Monsieur Marc Biller. Et aussi, j'ai vu un grand ami de McGill, un collègue de l'Université de Montréal, je pense John Parizella, président de la campagne de McGill. Hello, John. Merci d'être là. Merci d'être là. I would now like to introduce Yves Fortier, one of our campaign co-chairs, with Senator Michael Meehan and Jean McBurney. Mr. Fortier is a Rhodes Scholar and a McGill alumnus. He has had a distinguished career as a lawyer and diplomat, and has served as Canada's ambassador and permanent representative to the United Nations, as well as president of the United Nations Security Council. Without the terrific commitment of our three co-chairs, nothing of this would have been possible. C'est un plaisir et un honneur de l'avoir avec nous aujourd'hui, Monsieur Fortier. Merci beaucoup, euh, Olivier, et bonjour, euh, mesdames, mesdemoiselles, messieurs. Euh, oui, c'est avec beaucoup de fierté que vous euh, me voyez euh, ici ce matin. Euh, en mon nom et au nom de mes amis et collègues euh, Michael Meehan et Jean McBurney, euh, que je vous souhaite la, la bienvenue. C'est beaucoup, c'est très difficile pour moi de, de croire qu'il y a un peu plus de huit ans, Michael, Jean et moi euh, avions été invités par Heather Monroe Bloom à coprésider la campagne de financement la plus ambitieuse que McGill ait jamais menée. Nous étions flattés, oui, on était même enthousiastes, mais je dois vous avouer, on était quelque peu inquiets. Notre objectif de 750 millions de dollars était-il réaliste? Nous savons, nous savons tous, vous comme moi, que de nos jours au Québec, comme ailleurs au Canada, nous sommes constamment sollicités pour appuyer des, euh, des universités, des hôpitaux, et combien d'autres organismes de, de bienfaisance, diverses causes, euh, tout aussi méritoires les unes que les autres. Est-ce que Campagne McGill, inventer l'avenir, serait bien accueillie? Notre objectif, oui, notre objectif était ambitieux, mais il avait comme seul but euh, d'aider nos étudiants, euh, de financer d'importants travaux de recherche, d'appuyer les causes qui nous tiennent à cœur. Est-ce qu'on pouvait rêver d'atteindre notre objectif? En bout de piste, notre passion pour McGill, Michael, Jean et moi, euh, a eu comme résultat qu'on a, on a mis de côté nos préoccupations et on a dit oui. Et aujourd'hui, euh, je suis très fier d'annoncer que la campagne, grâce à la générosité de ses diplômés, de ses étudiants, oui, de ses étudiants, 
de leurs parents et amis ici au Québec et partout euh, à travers le monde, je n'exagère pas, a dépassé toutes nos attentes, et ce, de façon absolument exponentielle. Je veux dire merci, merci, un merci très sincère à près de 96 000 donateurs, 96 000 donateurs, dont 52 000 Québécois qui ont donné généreusement à Campagne McGill et lui a permis de recueillir 1 milliard 26 millions de dollars. Vous avez bien compris. <rires> Vous avez bien compris, 1 milliard 26, 000, 26 millions de dollars, ça fait beaucoup de zéros, ça. Nous avons dépassé notre objectif. Et rappelez-vous que ce, cet exploit a été réalisé alors que nous traversions la pire crise financière depuis 1929. Et ce sont d'abord les étudiants, les étudiants d'aujourd'hui, les étudiants de demain, qui profiteront de la générosité de nos bienfaiteurs. McGill, ses étudiants, son corps professoral pourront continuer à vaquer à leurs tâches, à rivaliser avec d'autres universités au Canada, ailleurs au Québec et à travers le monde. Yes, thanks to almost 52,000 donors, 52,000 from Quebec, and almost 44,000 more from around the world, McGill has raised $1 billion, $26 million to support its talented students, to foster brown, groundbreaking research, and to enhance its contributions to the local and global communities of which it is a, a citizen. Donors from all over walks of life They're from over 100 countries around the globe. They all share a common belief. They believe in our students. They, they, they believe in McGill. They believe in McGill's place in Montreal, in Quebec, in Canada. And they believe in the incredible things that can happen when a world-class university is fueled by the vision and the generosity of its donors. Et oui, en tant que Québécois, en tant que Québécois, je suis particulièrement fier de, se, de souligner que ce sont des Québécois qui ont contribué tout près de la moitié du montant recueilli durant la campagne. Si la philanthropie peut changer des vies, nous pouvons dire que dans le cas de Campagne McGill, ce sont les vies de nos étudiants, nos étudiants d'aujourd'hui, nos étudiants de demain, qui profiteront d'abord et avant tout de la générosité de nos bienfaiteurs. Une vaste gamme de programmes axés principalement sur les étudiants contribue à transformer McGill. Plus de 60 60 des sommes recueillies pendant la campagne sont destinées aux étudiants par le biais de bourses d'aide financière et le reste est consacré essentiellement à des projets de recherche ou d'infrastructures. Ce sont plus de 3 700 étudiants qui en ont profité jusqu'à aujourd'hui. 3 700. Il y en a ici dans la salle, dans la, dans la pièce. Vous allez les voir, vous allez en entendre quelques-uns. Et la campagne a aussi contribué, écoutez-moi bien, à créer 46 nouvelles chaires de recherche. Et plus de 100 millions ont en outre été consacrés à la création et à la rénovation d'espaces d'enseignement sur nos campus. Ce résultat démontre, mes amis, que la philanthropie trouve de plus en plus à s'exprimer au Québec et euh, constitue un acquis sur lequel il nous faut continuer à bâtir notre société. On dit euh, à juste titre qu'une image vaut parfois mille mots. Je vous invite donc maintenant à visionner un court vidéo qui, va mettre, euh, qui met en relief la philanthropie au service de nos étudiants. My name is Raven Snodgrass. I'm a Best in the West scholar from Calgary, Alberta. I just finished my third year at McGill in kinesiology, and I'm on the varsity swim team. 
Florida, I had a pretty successful swimming career all throughout high school. And so I was getting recruited for schools pretty much all over the place. And so it was kind of very overwhelming for a grade 12 student who has the world at her hands to kind of pick one place and one place only to start. My swim coaches in Calgary have a lot of connections to McGill. It has a great reputation, a great school, great academics. And so I went on a recruiting trip and I fell in love with it. My goal moving forward is to get into med school and have a career as a family doctor. So obviously you need to have a good undergrad. And I know McGill has a name in Western Canada. When I come back in the summer, it's actually really funny. People always ask, oh, where do you go again? And I say, oh, I go to McGill University. They're like, oh, you must be so smart, just so brilliant. Winning the Best in the West scholarship has meant a lot to me and my family, and it definitely helped my parents out financially because they have three girls, so they need all the financial help they can get. I'm so thankful for the Best in the West donors. It has given me an opportunity that I wouldn't be able to have without them. We're so proud of Raven. She's accomplished a lot. And when she chose McGill and, and her first year there, she just she just loved it. So it doesn't get better than that. Raven winning the Best of West scholarship means everything. So to have somebody acknowledge that financially is it just it's fantastic for us. She's an awesome person and she's gonna make a heck of a doctor one day. Je m'appelle Martin Legault. Je suis un gradué de l'Université McGill en conservation des ressources. Je viens tout juste de graduer avec un degré en génie des bioresources, agrologie professionnelle, avec une mineure en études de terrain. J'ai récemment gagné la, la bourse de la famille Beeler, qui m'a permis de voyager et aller faire un stage à Cuba l'été dernier en agriculture. Donc j'ai eu l'opportunité d'aller vivre et expérimenter l'agriculture pendant deux mois et demi à Cuba, dans une communauté rurale. J'ai eu la chance de planter des arbres et de récolter. Il y avait un tracteur dans la communauté et deux bœufs qui servaient pour faire la traction. Donc la situation à Cuba est très différente d'ici. Ils ont beaucoup moins accès à la machinerie, donc ça nous a permis de voir comment les choses étaient faites beaucoup plus manuellement. The internship office opened in 2009, and to date we've had 130 students participate in the program, roughly 50% intern internationally, countries like India, Thailand, Africa. The program is really beneficial, and the experience is very beneficial because it allows them to really see what's going on outside of Canada, um, how their education will benefit the countries that they're going to intern with. Philanthropy really literally got this office off the ground. Without its donation, we wouldn't exist. Au travers de mes différentes études à McGill, j'ai pu voir beaucoup de choses dans les livres, dans les laboratoires, mais le fait de pouvoir aller faire un stage à l'étranger et de voir comment qu'est-ce que l'agriculture est faite m'ont permis vraiment de consolider mon appréciation pour l'agriculture. Je suis extrêmement reconnaissant envers la famille Beeler pour leur support qu'ils m'ont offert et qui m'a permis d'aller faire un stage en agriculture à Cuba. My name is Elmira Musavi Khunsari. I'm a Varas Flow, uh, Faculty of Engineering, McGill, and uh, I'm doing my PhD at Material Science and Engineering. I was born in Isfahan, uh, Iran. In Iran, uh, all parents like their children to be educated and they like them to be engineers or doc uh, medical doctors. I remember when I was a little child, my grandma used to take me to a school nearby our home so I could watch uh, students and I really enjoyed that. I moved to Montreal, to Canada in 2007. I faced the different cultures in Canada, uh, totally different from my uh, country, and sometimes it was difficult. The first winter was too long, too dark, <laughs> and too cold. <laughs> 
When I uh, applied to PhD for program at Miguel, I was offered the uh, White House Fellowship, and now I'm here. Before the campaign, I think we had less than 10 PhD awards. Uh, now we have around about 100 that we can offer each year, and that's all been enabled by uh, the generosity of donors. What is most uh, special and unique about the Vedas Fellowships is that they have really allowed us to recruit some of the top PhD students available. That way we're having more impact on society, on industry, uh, and on the future. The future of engineering in Canada is in good hands, um, thanks in part to the generosity of, of Mr. Vedas and his family. As a mom, being married, as a PhD student, I have lots of responsibilities, but at least I'm not worried about my finances. I've never met Vada's family in the past, uh, but if I meet them in the future, I have two words for them. Thank you. Well, I'll say it once again, and you've seen it uh, on celluloid, you know, the lives of uh, Raven and Martin and Elmira has been changed uh, because of philanthropy, because of donors who have contributed so generously to uh, uh, La Campagne McGill. Few people have done more to change the lives of our students than the woman I would now like to introduce. McGill's 16th principal and vice chancellor, Heather Monroe Bloom. <laughs> Heather, for once that I have the microphone, <laughs> let me hold on to it for a minute. <laughs> You'll have to suffer through a few more comments from, uh, from Eve. Uh, as you're all aware, uh, Heather's 10-year term as principal comes to an end uh, in just a couple of short weeks. And uh, what a decade. So uh, on behalf of Michael and Jean uh, and all of our fellow campaign volunteers, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, offer my most sincere and heartfelt thanks to, he to Heather for all that she has done for McGill over the last decade. Heather, durant ces deux mandats, a été plus qu'une principale ou une recteur. Elle a été vraiment une ambassadrice plénipotentiaire et extraordinaire pour l'Université McGill. Avec Mark Weinstein, son compagnon de voyage, vice-recteur au développement et aux relations euh, avec les diplômés. Heather, son bâton de pèlerin en main, a tendu la main à nos diplômés, aux amis de McGill, euh, à Montréal, ailleurs au Canada, euh, et partout sur la planète. Il n'est pas exagéré de dire, mais je veux le dire, que le visage de campagne McGill, c'est d'abord et avant tout Heather. Elle a été un modèle pour tous les bénévoles qui ont suivi ses traces et qui ont tenté de l'émuler. Son dévouement, son énergie, sa passion pour McGill sont contagieux et nous ont tous euh, inspirés. En fait, le succès de campagne McGill, Inventer l'avenir, revient à Heather d'abord et avant tout. Et je dis du plus profond de mon cœur, Heather, merci. Now, the microphone is yours. <laughs> merci beaucoup, Yves. Bonjour, bienvenue, uh, collègues, étudiants, uh, chers amis. I'd like to ask, uh, in addition to Martin, for, uh, to, in addition to Martin, for uh, Monsieur Beeler, and uh, Sarah and David to come up here with me, please, and to be recognized as I say a few words. As you've heard from uh, Maître Fortier, uh, to have a campaign like this, to have a success like this, uh, takes an army of people, uh, volunteers, uh, colleagues, 
uh, devoted, uh, devoted people. And so please join with me in expressing our appreciation through these folks. And I'd like, in addition, to ask Vice Principal Mark Weinstein and Chair of the Board Kip Cobbett to come up maybe on this side of the podium to, uh, to be recognized as well. You've heard from Maître Forche what we've, uh, what we've achieved in, uh, in under nine years. This is historic in Canada as a uh, campaign. Um, it is absolutely a fact that no great achievement happens, uh, and certainly not one of this magnitude, without thousands of people being committed to having a strong university that serves at the highest level, that plays a role in building Quebec and building Montreal, and that works hand in glove with our outstanding sister universities to say that without philanthropy, uh, without philanthropy, we cannot have the quality of education and the quality of research that will build Quebec and a successful future for, for Quebec that will build Canada's place in the world and that will allow each of us in a moment of globalization to reach out to partners, to citizens around the world. I feel very proud as Principal McGill that we've achieved this and Eve, you've gone into the background, but I want to thank you and, uh, and Michael and Jean for your extraordinary contributions and dedication and effectiveness as co-chairs of this, this campaign. Uh, this is, along with our chair, Kip Cobbett, uh, these are examples of volunteerism at the highest level. Every one of these people has their day jobs and big, big responsibilities on top of that. Um, les fonds qu'on euh, qu versé, notre 95 000 donateurs, sont destinés spécifiquement à des activités que le budget de fonctionnement de l'Université de McGill ne couvre pas. Not a dollar of the philanthropy that comes in uh, is used in the operating budget of the university. Um, with the uh, underfunding of universities that we experience, it is absolutely essential that government stay the course in funding universities at a high level. Philanthropy is no substitute uh, for government support, and it is only through a partnership of philanthropy, of government support, and of support from all who benefit from education to the best of their ability in collaboration that we can build the kind of education, the kind of services our students and our professors deserve, the quality of research that has an impact on society. And this, uh, this campaign uh, has, has achieved a great figure uh, and, and uh, through this amount of money, nous avons la création de plus de 600 bourses et prix étudiants, la création de 46 nouvelles chaires professorielles et près de 300 millions de dollars pour la création et la rénovation d'espaces pour l'enseignement et la recherche. Un grand, grand besoin uh, pour le McGill. Nous avons un campus, de, les deux campus uh, historique, très beau, mais avec beaucoup de besoins. Et cette, uh, cette un source de financement, mais pas assez de financement pour, pour avoir uh, les, les, les infrastructures modernes et uh, de servir no, nos étudiants et nos professeurs. 60% of the money raised is going to support students such as Martin Legault, uh, Sarah and David, who are also here with us this evening. And you, you'll have seen uh, Martin, you'll hear from him shortly. Um, uh, he has an enormous passion for agriculture and the environment and for bringing modern approaches into uh, agricultural environmental sciences and biosciences, uh, a field that we all depend on, uh, not just for today, but for uh, tomorrow. Um, in closing, I just want to say that everybody here Everybody who experiences the success of McGill has a responsibility, in my view, to say that philanthropy is important, to celebrate success, to talk about wherever you can, be ambassadors for the fact that government has to stay the course in investing in universities, that we need philanthropy in partnership with government, in partnership with what students can afford to pay for their education, to have the quality of education and research that we need. There has never been a moment where having outstanding quality of education, of research, of the development of our people, of our citizens, has been more important than it is today. 
And, uh, and I urge every one of you to make that your case and to make that your passion. It's not just McGill. The success of philanthropy and the sustained investment and celebration of government in the importance of education are what will make our society, civil society, great. That's what McGill's known for. That's what we count on you for. Merci infiniment. Et maintenant, Martin. Alors, euh, merci beaucoup, Madame la Principale. Alors, suite à un semestre d'études à la Barbade que j'ai fait avec McGill, euh, qui portait sur l'agriculture en général dans les pays tropicaux, euh, je désirais vraiment approfondir mes connaissances sur l'agriculture, mais dans les pays en voie de développement. Donc, j'ai trouvé une opportunité de stage euh, en coopération internationale euh, où, qui portait sur l'agriculture la, et les énergies renouvelables à Cuba pendant trois mois. Alors, euh, il fallait défrayer évidemment une partie des coûts pour euh, ce type de stage-là. Donc, euh, c'est ainsi que j'ai obtenu une contribution financière euh, de la part de la famille Beeler pour euh, qui aide les étudiants qui voyageaient, euh, euh, qui, qui voyageaient en général. Euh, donc, avant le départ, ça, ça m'a permis de garder mon attention complètement sur mon expérience académique. Euh, puis, un cours rendu là-bas, à Cuba, euh, l'expérience a vraiment renforcé mon intérêt en génie agricole, euh, en énergie renouvelable et aussi en agronomie, à travers une panoplie d'activités qu'on a faites avec... Euh, euh, la communauté. Euh, on, a, on, a, on a eu la chance de, de visiter et vraiment voir tout, tout ce qui se passait là-bas. Euh, ça, ça m'a permis de vraiment avoir une vision intégrée de l'agriculture. Euh, on, on, on a pu le voir dans la vidéo euh, vraiment d'un bout à l'autre. J'ai eu l'expérience au Canada, j'ai eu l'expérience à la Barbade et puis j'ai eu l'expérience à, à Cuba. Et puis ça, ça donne une vision qui est beaucoup plus internationale, beaucoup plus globale. Il euh, n'y a rien qui peut égaler une expérience sur le terrain. Euh, comme celle-ci, pour nous conscientiser aux enjeux. Euh, personnellement, c'est dans mon domaine d'études, mais je ne suis pas le seul à en profiter. Donc, euh, c'est certain qu'en agriculture, il reste beaucoup de choses à améliorer. Et puis, euh, autant ici qu'ailleurs. Et puis, un stage comme ça m'a vraiment permis d'être de, de, témoin des échanges qui sont possibles entre les pays, malgré le choc culturel qu'il y a eu. Euh, c'est certain qu'au début, quand on arrive là-bas, c'est une culture totalement différente. Mais... En retour, ça m'a donné vraiment une grande appréciation pour tout euh, le savoir que j'ai pu accumuler dis -je bien, dans, dans mon éducation à McGill. Et puis, ça permet d'orienter mon, mon cheminement de carrière euh, futur. Donc, euh, ça m'a aussi permis de comprendre que, euh, à quel point la philanthropie peut avoir un, un impact directement positif sur la vie des étudiants et puis aussi ceux euh, qui, qui les entourent. Donc, euh, je vous remercie beaucoup. Merci, Martin. Nous allons maintenant passer à la période de, de questions pour les journalistes. We will now have the opportunity to uh, go to the question period for journalists. I would invite journalists to ask questions about the topic of the day, the theme of the day, and uh, for other questions, we will have uh, opportunities to give individual interviews. I would like to invite my colleagues and the students, my colleague Mark and, and Kip and Heather, to stay for that, uh, because I guess that uh, You will, and, and Eve, please join us for that, uh, that question period. So, uh, all yours. Oui, absolument, nos étudiants, là, Dave, Sarah et Martin euh, seront disponibles également si, euh, si vous souhaitez leur poser des questions sur leur expérience. Uh, first of all, is this the most money that any university has raised in a campaign like this? This is the shortest period could, of time. Could, could I'm, you just I'm get sorry. into the yeah. microphone, please? Uh, there are other universities in Canada that have raised more money than this. This is the shortest period of time from the launch of a campaign through to completion of a campaign for any institution in Canada. But for McGill, is it a record? Or? Oh, it's a huge record for McGill. This is... <laughs> this is Beyond a record for McGill. What's the most you raised before this? Uh, in, in, indeed, it's been uh, a couple of decades since McGill had a major campaign. And uh, uh, this last major campaign was held under uh, our Governor General, then Principal David Johnson, who had then Canada's most ambitious campaign goal, which was $250 million. Why do you think that you got so much more support from outside the community? We didn't. We got more support from inside Quebec than from outside of Quebec, yes, uh, in terms of total, total uh, donors. 
Uh, we had 52,000 uh, Quebecers who contributed to this campaign, um, and over half of the dollars that came in came from Quebec. What, what moved us was that many people who are not McGill alumni contributed to McGill and supported it both within Quebec, across Canada, and internationally because of our mission, because of the discipline we bring to what we do, and uh, because of our high standards. And you say th this kind of philanthropy cannot replace the uh, lack of funds? Absolutely not. When I became principal of McGill, my goal was uh, one of my major goals and one of the reasons we launched the campaign was to be able to say that every qualified student would be able to come to McGill independent of financial need. We've increased by 500% the amount of student support we have. There is still a gap in our ability to allow every qualified student to come who doesn't have the means to come on their own. How big is that gap? It's closing. It's closing. I guess it'll be hard to top this. Look, I hope this sets a high watermark. I'm delighted that our colleague John Paracella from Université de Montréal is here. They've got a campaign underway. There are a number of university campaigns in Quebec, and it's time for philanthropy to help us um, raise the, the standard, the quality of education and research to the very highest levels. Why should Quebecers get less than others elsewhere? And, and you can't do that on philanthropy alone. You can't do that on government support alone. You can't do that on tuition alone. You need all three to come together and each to stay the course to the best of their ability. But we know that the economy is suffering in Quebec. Uh, that makes the role of universities extremely important. It makes the preparation of our citizens extremely important. And uh, it's a moment for us to say that government will make a priority of universities and university research and our students and their quality the quality of their education, uh, but as well that citizens across Quebec will say, I'm going to do my part uh, to support the quality of our universities. Do you think this sends a message to the government that people... There's no intent to send a message to the government. That's not the goal. Was it hard to get donations from companies? Le from companies? Corporations? I think corporations make up about 14% uh, of our, of our uh, total uh, support. And uh, that money comes in in uh, um, uh, you know, absolutely untied support for students dominantly. And uh, look, they're looking for great graduates. Uh, companies need, uh, companies and not-for-profit organizations are look for highly prepared uh, young people. What was the average donation? Under $1,000. 80,000 donors. 80,000 donors of our 92,000 donors contributed under $1,000 to the campaign. 14% about the average? Uh, Pardon me? 14% is about the average from corporations? Uh, uh, I don't know about that. Is that, I'll, I'll let our vice principal. Cor the corporate giving in total was about 14%. Yeah, but the, the question is, is that average for a university campaign? Oh, I see. Uh, it is a it is ballpark between 14 and 18%. Yeah, I would say it's a little on the low, low. on the low side. Yeah. Um, but again, this is part of developing a culture of philanthropy in Quebec. And for everybody who gives to know they do it um, unconstrained, uh, it goes to support the, uh, the, the students and the quality of the programs and, frankly, here our infrastructure as well. Other questions or... Uh... Question in French too. Is it possible to do an interview in French by the way? Yes, absolutely. What? Lisa? Autre question? Thank you very much. Thank Merci you beaucoup. very much for coming out. And as I asked, please, uh, we all have a responsibility to make sure our institutions are successful. And let's celebrate success. Let's make a part of the culture of Quebec celebrating success. Thank you. Thank you.